Welcome to Reimagining Resilience to Developing Firmness Tools. In this workshop, we're going to build on the learning from Reimagining Resilience 1 using a trauma lens. And so what we learned is that trauma-responsive practices and trauma-informed schools can help us as adults to support that natural resiliency inside of young people. So in this workshop, we're going to be focused on supporting young people. We're not going to be talking about fixing them, but actually shifting the ways that we see and interpret and respond so that young people can best engage in learning and community themselves. And what we know is that this is really long-term work, but when we're able to actually um, align trauma-informed practices with these firmness tools, we can connect with young people and hold them accountable in ways that actually strengthen relationship as well as develop young people's skills. So one way to think about teaching or parenting styles is in terms of kindness and of firmness. So if you take a look at the graph, you'll see that uh, we've got high kindness right at the top and then low kindness down at the bottom. And then we have high firmness over on the right and we have low firmness over on the left. And when we're talking about firmness here, we really mean being connected to our own values uh, and our respect for ourselves in a situation. And so I wanna start off by looking in that top left-hand corner. This is an area, uh, if you were to think about a classroom or you were to think about a household where there's a lot of kindness, but there is not so much firmness at all. And I'm just going to give you a second to think about how would you describe that classroom or that household? So what we find for a lot of people is that um, you might first think that it could be chaotic there. It could be loud. Uh, you also might think it could be really creative and it could be really fun in that classroom or that household. And so uh, the name that we give to this uh, teaching style or parenting style is permissive. And that means that uh, with this approach, there is a lot of freedom, and at the same time, there's very low order. And then if we were to move into that bottom right-hand corner, uh, and that's the area where there is a lot of firmness, but there is very little kindness going on, how would you describe a household uh, or a classroom that looks like that? So just take a second and think about that. So oftentimes people say, uh, this might be a place where you might feel might feel rigid uh, or you might feel shame or fear. Uh, people also say this might be a place where there's really clear structure and there's quiet and peace as well. Uh, and so this is an approach to teaching or to parenting that we refer to as authoritarian. So here there's very little freedom, but there's a lot of order. And so when we talk about these different approaches to, to teaching, uh, to helping people grow, uh, we're not saying that one's good and one's bad. It's really not about that, uh, but it's knowing that there's different ways that we might lean. Uh, and we actually oftentimes dance back and forth between these, right? And we might dance back and forth in the course of a day, or we might dance back and forth in the course of our lifetime. So I think it's pretty common. This was the case for me when I first was in a school. Oftentimes as a young teacher or educator, or maybe even as a newer parent, uh, we start off more permissive. So we might start off really wanting to be liked, wanting uh, the kids to feel connected with us and to be having a good time. And so we're more permissive and we kind of let things slide. So even when there's behaviors that challenge us, we kind of let it go because we want to make sure people are feeling good. And then at some point, uh, we start to lose our patience, right? There's that one thing that kind of hits us where real disrespect is happening uh, or things do feel overly chaotic and learning isn't happening. And oftentimes we have this feeling like we need this to stop. What am I going to do? I'm going to lean into my authoritarian, right? I move over and I, and I just go full on kind of 180 to this is now my classroom. It's my way or the highway and things are going to go the way that I want them to be. All right, there's no, there's not going to be any more messing around. And we might be in our classroom or in our household like that for a while. And then after a while, we start to kind of get sick of ourselves being the way that we are. We might start getting sick of the students feeling oppressed or feeling 
like they can't be their full selves. And we, we, we go right back into permissive again, right? And then we can do that dance over and over throughout our lives. And again, through the course of a day, that can happen. And what I know for myself is that if I'm in that dance all the time, it's hard for me to feel like I'm really in control. And so uh, we want to start looking at what are some other ways besides feeling like we have to have kind of either one or the other. How do we create more of a groundedness in both? Uh, and before we dive into that, uh, I want to look at that bottom left corner, okay? And so this is uh, a household or a classroom where there is not much firmness and not much kindness. And um, this is the kind of place that uh, we refer to sometimes as neglect. Uh, but we do that not with a sense of blame or that this is because the teacher or the parent is doing this intentionally necessarily or is bad, but because oftentimes there are circumstances that lead to a situation like this. And what we know is that if that's happening, then the young person in that situation is probably going to need a lot of extra support uh, in other environments, right? They need some extra help. And maybe the, the parent or the teacher does too. We see this sometimes with teacher burnout. Again, not because the teacher doesn't care or doesn't love the students or their job, but because there's a sense that um, there are systemic problems that are making it really challenging to show up the way we'd want to. So that's what we refer to as neglect. So up in that upper right-hand corner, we've got both that kindness and that firmness. And I'm curious how you would describe a classroom or a household uh, where there was both that kindness and firmness. So there's both order and freedom at the same time. Take a moment to think about that. And oftentimes people, when they think about what that might look like, they think that about cooperation, about uh, young people supporting each other uh, and taking leadership as well. Uh, there's lots of different ways we might imagine this. In positive discipline, this is referred to as a democratic or an authoritative teaching style. So we're, we're kind and firm at the same time. Uh, Zaretta Hammond refers to this as a, being a warm demander. And so um, one of the things that I think is really important to also get across is that in some ways we're talking about something more than kindness. So kindness, we can kind of think like, oh, just be kind, just be nice. But I'd say we're actually talking about something a lot more profound than that. I'd say what we're talking about is connection. So we could actually replace that word kindness with connection. And that means that I'm connected to you uh, I'm holding you in dignity and respect. I care about you, and I wish the best for you, right? No matter what, it's not just being kind, it's this connection that's deep uh, and, and real. And then uh, the firmness piece, that's really being grounded in my respect for myself as well, for my values, what I believe in, and what the needs of the group in general are. So to me, a great way to think about this connected firmness that we're talking about is uh, when we think about mutual respect. And I know oftentimes we talk about mutual respect and we say mutual respect means uh, I respect you and you respect me. It's that kind of transaction, right? Uh, in this connected firm approach to mutual respect, uh, what we're talking about is I respect you. I respect myself and I respect the needs of this situation, so everybody else involved. So that's that connection and kindness, I respect you, and also this firmness. I'm grounded in who I am, what I believe, and what can help us all do the best that we can. So that's what we're going to explore and try to start leaning into. It's not easy, um, but this is the direction we're trying to move to together, and that really doing all of this work together is all about. So connected and firm is where we're setting our course. In Reimagining Resilience 1, we really leaned into tools and strategies for connection, helping children learn to connect and stay regulated in their own bodies, becoming buffering adults ourselves, and using encouragement as a way to help young people step into being their best selves. In Reimagining Resilience 2, we'll add more of a focus on firmness. How can we stay firm in our own values, needs, and the needs of the situation 
while at the same time remaining connected to the needs and experiences of the child. In your workbook, we've provided some reflection questions for you to think about your own teaching or parenting style. Which way do you lean on an easier day? Or how about one of those more stressful days? And what does it look like and sound like when you lean more towards permissive or more towards authoritarian, or when you actually lean into that more democratic style, that connected firm? And what are the small steps that you might be able to take to help you really find and own your own connected firmness? So thanks everybody, excited to dive in.